my HD friends and let me go ahead and launch this show proper and then we will uh, get on. In case I don't have time to edit this out, do you get to see show prep? Somebody will by the time it loads anyway. Alright, we are set to go live. Greetings, unsettled souls, and welcome to The Correct Views. Yes, Sam I.B. DeGangy reporting for The Media Speaks, and I am back. I have a new computer, which I'm looking at now, and I wasn't realizing that the computer, the new computer, the camera overrides the camera that I have running, so the live viewers are going to be looking up my nose, so right, we'll, we'll deal with it in time. Guys, it's nice to be back, very, very nice to be back. Um, I got the stupidest comment today, and we are going to get into the Fukushima update, you have my word. Um, as somebody mentioned that they didn't like my global warming update facts, because of my hair. Isn't that great? You know that you're winning the information war when the only thing that they can attack you for is that you like to dye your hair crazy colors. You know what? That's what the correct views is. I'm not going to hide who I am. I have facts, and I'm an artistic musician freaky person. If you can't deal with both of them, then this probably isn't the show for you. But if you do want facts, and don't really give a damn what I look like, this is the right show. I'm not here to be a pretty boy. Alright friends, here we go. ENEnews.com. I got a few uh, from them, a couple of them I should say, because I thought it was relevant. I thought it was very, very relevant. Government model shows airborne radioactive plume covering entire west coast of U.S. and Canada on March 22, 2011. Ten times more radioactive than the plume coming from the Fukushima plant on the same day. Radiation levels in some plumes had no discernible decrease across the Pacific Ocean. So why am I reading such an old story? Because they're just now finding out exactly how bad it really was. Uh, I'm going to get to the notable features part of this article, but again, it's on e, &E News. Particles with the highest radioactivity were released around March 15th. Uh, there's a link for UN Fukushima Unit 2 reactor burst on March 15th. And of course, we're talking about particles that remain in the atmosphere, in the environment, and continue to sicken and worsen people all of the time. They go on, uh, their radioactivity lasts for, in some instances, millions of years. Look up the uh, half-life of plutonium. For someone that's really new to the show, half-life is how long it takes to lose its radioactivity, so to speak, by half. It, it decays by half. Um, one, one radioactive element in your body can create havoc your entire life long, not just kill you not just give you cancer and fun things like lymphoma, but weaken your immune system so that you're susceptible for things like more colds. Um, these things matter, okay? These things matter a lot, and I'm uh, and that's why I'm doing this. Um, there's a couple other notable features here that I don't just want to gloss over. Particle, particles caught in clockwise circulation are embedded in fair weather high pressure systems and their radioactivity will persist for longer periods. In general, reaching the United States showed air concentrations over 1,000 times smaller than areas near Japan. So what's known as the jet stream, and no, that's not the stream that goes behind jet airplanes. The jet stream, what makes the atmosphere, what makes the uh, northern hemisphere what it is, the currents, the wind currents, are dragging these particles all over us. And we've seen what has happened to whales and uh, tuna and things like that in the Pacific Ocean. Well, guess what? Guess what's happening to us? Um, I want to go on to this. This is um, also e, e News. Reports, experts agree many species of wildlife and fisheries are endangered globally due to large release of radioactivity into the ocean at Fukushima. And there's a quote here, has Fukushima radiation entered the New Zealand ecosystem? Um, inevitably. I mean, the, 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 you, you would have 
to have an, be an ostrich with your head in the sand to think that it would. Uh, New Zealand Herald, March 27, 2014, has Fukushima radiation entered NZ's ecosystem. Scientists are to check whether New Zealand mutton birds that spent the winter off the coast of Japan have been exposed to radiation from the damaged Fukushima nuclear power plant. For those of you that think that the southern hemisphere is going to completely escape this, that won't apply to birds that are bringing things back and forth. But it'll be greatly, uh, it'll be a lot safer. Uh, in a new pilot study, University of Auckland scientists will investigate whether radioactive cesium has entered the New Zealand ecosystem or a food chain via the birds. Researchers will test the birds' feathers for gamma rays that include the presence of the radioactive isotope, the deadly cesium-134. When I say deadly, I am not kidding. I added that for a reason. Um, it is one of the major cancer uh, causers. It is one of the major life ruiners. Again, like I always say, there's a reason the bands pick scary names. D Lake likes this story, like Obituary and Death and Morbid Angel. We put on a great show, by the way. Cesium 134. It, there's a reason they did it. It is that poisonous. Um, the voice, and again, uh, if, if the Southern Hemisphere th thing. People say that living in the Southern Hemisphere, there's no new plants down there. The jet stream uh, is a, a bit of a factor because it goes in the other direction. That's helpful. But you've got migrating fish. You've got migrating birds. Um, currently, you have uh, the World Trade Agreement. God only knows they could be eating uh, some of the very best sushi down there from Japan. If you're eating sushi right now, by the way, you might as well just shoot yourself in the head. That's how good you're doing yourself. Voice of Russia on March 27, 2014. Researchers from the University of Auckland will conduct a pilot study to establish whether radiation has entered the New Zealand ecosystem or food chain via the birds. The research aims to determine the degree of which the mutton bird population of the country was exposed to radiation from Fukushima. Experts agree that many species of wildlife and fisheries are in danger globally due to the large release of radioactivity into the ocean. In the wake of the devastating 2011 earthquake and tsunami that resulted in a meltdown of three nuclear reactors, the earthquake caused it. Do not forget that. Moreover, radioactive water continues to leak into the Pacific every day. Why do I say that? Because they want you to believe that the tsunami caused it, because those tsunamis are very, very rare. Um, that's not the case. The earthquake caused the, the, the meltdown. It was going to melt down whether the water hit it or not. It would not have been as severe, obviously, but it would have happened. Why does that matter? Because we have earthquake zones where most new plants are in the world. Uh, the geniuses in Iran are trying to build one on an active fault. And um, let's, let's not forget that it is 100% uh, probability that if a certain number of dams were to break in the U.S., it would cause... Uh, a man-made tsunami, if you will, that will cause an American Fukushima, just in case you were wondering. Uh, how do you stop these things? Like the tuna thing I said earlier, uh, get all-natural fish oil, uh, preferably uh, fish that were born here, and make sure they don't have mercury in them. Uh, what else can you do? Get out of uh, mutual funds that any new plants are in. Um, that's a huge help. Get your money out of them. Stop helping GE and Westinghouse. Stop helping these people. Yahoo New Zealand, University of Auckland, March 27, 2014. Scientists from the University of Auckland were undertaking, and it goes back, that's another mutton bird story. But there you go, there's two of them. I'm not going to read every one that's listed. There are many links there. Uh, this is from uh, boston.com slash news. Matsumoto, Japan. Uh, this, when you want some good news here, I've got some good news for you, believe it or not. Fukushima children start school. Flea radiation. There's been this, I mean... I, I live in America, for those my friends in Japan that watch this. I live in America. And everything here is, let's worship Obama. Justin Timberlake is great. Lady Gaga and Beyonce really do know how to sing. Of course they do. The blind lead the blind here. But Japan is worse. It is considered a, a, a mark of pride if you automatically conform to structures that you know are detrimental to your health. Well, they're starting to get away from that there. 
Twelve-year-old girl didn't want to leave her younger brother, and her grandparents didn't want her to go away. But a family living, well, well, why they're living there, who knows, near the no-go zone surrounding Japan's destroyed nuclear plant has other things to consider. Yeah, like moving! Yuki Hashimoto and her husband sent their daughter 300 kilometers, that's 200 miles, away to the pitch, picturesque town of Matsumoto, where the mayor offered to take in and educate young people living in the shadow of the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. Research has not shown the children to be in clear danger from exposure to low-dose radiation, but mistrust of authorities remain high. Let's pause. Anybody doubting me, go ahead and look up uh, nodules, thyroid, Japanese children on the internet. For anybody that doesn't doubt me, we are finding nodules on anywhere, depending on where they are in Japan, from uh, 5 to 15% of the children having radio, uh, having nodules on their thyroids, which will likely uh, cause weight problems. It can lead to uh, blood sugar issues. And we all know the big C word. Everything with radioactivity automatically leads to the C word at the end of the day. The Hoshimoto family and the parents of seven other children accepted the offer. Now, he's a wonderful person. I didn't really believe these things are safe that the government is telling us, said Hoshimoto wisely, who lives in Kariyama, about 20 miles west of the 20-kilometer no-go zone. We made the decision with her future 10 years ago, 20 years later in mind. God bless them. The eight students, seven in junior high and one in elementary school, began their, lives, their new lives this month. With the beginning of Japan's school year, they live in a rented house with bunk beds and live-in caretakers. The project is the brainchild of Mayor Kaya Shujinyawa, a medical doctor whose name I just butchered, who performed more than 100 thyroid cancer surgeries in neighboring Belarus after the 1986 Chernobyl disaster. In other words, this is a doctor who knows that they're being lied to. He did these surgeries on people when a meltdown that wasn't even as bad happened in Chernobyl in 86. He knows what it's going to lead to. So now he's doing something. For those outside the largely off-limits 20-kilometer zone, taking such a drastic step is relatively rare. The Hoshimoto family went back and forth. Um, there's a wide range of views. Yeah, no, there's, there's the right view and the wrong view. If you don't watch out for radiation, you will be sick. That is the correct view, unfortunately. It says, so far, 33 children have been diagnosed with thyroid cancer in Fukushima in the last three years. Among 20, 270,000 check, 18 years or under. Now, that's not nodules. That is full-blown cancer. Thyroid cancer among children is rare at a handful in a million, but some experts say the higher cases are merely the result of more rigorous checking. Oh yeah, all these kids were just walking around with cancer before Fukushima. We just didn't check them. It says the bottom line, no one knows for sure. We do know for sure. If you don't think we know for sure, go look up Chris Busby. Go ahead, look up what he has to say about it. Um, it says that some, one of the families here didn't believe in the danger until their daughter developed nosebleeds. A little bit late then, don't you think? Friends, you're listening to The Correct Views, brought to you by the Arcadia Grill. The Arcadia Grill is located in downtown Camden. Check this out. Today's Wednesday. Wednesday, lunch carryout available for free delivery. Free delivery? Man, that sounded awful good to me. 330-454-6055. Soup of the day, a salad, five fifty. Stove pipes with salad, rigatoni for you non dagos like me. Seven o'clock. By that I mean I am a dago. I'm kidding. We joke here. Chicken kebab over rice, seven ninety nine. Joey firehouse sandwich, seven dollars. Guys, sausage with egg, cheese, hot peppers, and fresh Italian bread. Oh my God, I'm starving. I'm gonna cut the show early to go eat. Friends, go to the Arcadia Grill. You will love their food. Also, check out the literary works of Mike McLaughlin. His email address is archangel underscore 44703 at yahoo.com. This man writes some of the most awesome fiction that you will ever read. He's even doing poetry now. Get a hold of him. Let him know. He'll give you some of his work, I'm sure. And he sells short, short stories for almost nothing. And if you're listening to this show, you're not one of dumb America that doesn't read anything. I used to read fiction, but this show has sort of made that impossible. Theguardian.com. I got a few more I want to get to uh, if I can. 
Fukushima is an ongoing warning to the world on nuclear energy. Amy Goodman, God bless you. This is somewhat dated, but I absolutely wanted to get to it because it was just brilliant. It was given to me, and I hadn't seen it. It's dated in January. I write these facts as dispassionately as I can, in the hope that they will act as a warning to the world, wrote the journalist Wilfred Burchett from Hiroshima. His story headlined The Atomic Plague appeared in the London Daily Press on the 5th of September in 1945. Burchett violated the U.S. military blockade of Fukushima and was the first Western journalist to visit that devastated city. He wrote... Hiroshima does not look like a bombed city. It looks as if a monster steamrolled had passed over it and squashed it out of existence. I just found a used Godzilla movie for like a dollar at a secondhand store. And I was reminded of the fact that that is in fact why they created the Godzilla movies. For those of you that like those kinds of factoids, it is an analogy to what they went through. Jump ahead 66 years to March 11, 2011, and 600 miles north to Fukushima in the Great East Japan earthquake, which caused the tsunami. As we all know, the initial onslaught left 19,000 people uh, dead or missing. We know about that. Three years later, Japan is still reeling from the impact of the disaster. More than 340,000 people became nuclear refugees, forced to abandon their homes and their livelihood. Filmmaker Atushi Fena... Funahashi directed the documentary Nuclear Nation, the Fukushima Refugee Story. In it, he follows refugees from the town of Futaba, where the Fukushima Daiichi plant is based. It says there's none in uh, terms of people. The only thing government is saying is so far, at least six years from the accident, you cannot go back to your home. Friends, they can never go back to the home. That's the dirty little secret they don't want to say. So we're looking at all of this. All of this going on, all of this uh, cancer risk, all of this uh, dislocation. It says, since the disaster forced grassroots movements have grown to permanently decommission all of Japan's nuclear power plants. The Prime Minister at the time of the earthquake, Naoto Kan, explained how his position on nuclear power shifted. We do not need nuclear. As Einstein said, uh, nuclear fission is one hell of a way to boil a cup of water. Um, and let's face it. Man is not warming the planet. We've learned this from Climate Gate. And if it was, the answer to man warming the planet is not to poison it with cancerous elements. My position before a March 11th, 2011 concept was that as long as we make sure that it's safely operated, nuclear power plants could be operated and should be operated. However, after experiencing the disaster on March 11th, I've changed my thinking 180 degrees completely. There is no other accident or disaster that could affect 50 million people. Maybe a war, but there's no other accident that can cause such a tra tragedy. Prime Minister Abe, uh, currently, uh, the most conservative Japanese administration since World War II, wants to restart the country's nuclear power plants despite overwhelming opposition. Yeah, never mind the fact that Japan was created by an earthquake and will likely one day be greatly truncated due to another one. Let's build a new plant there. Another one. It gives you an empty feeling in the stomach to see such man-made devastation, Wilfred Burchett wrote, citing, sitting in the rubble of Hiroshima in 1945. The two U.S. atomic bomb attacks on the civilian population of Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Nagasaki have deeply impacted Japan to this day. Likewise, the triple-edged disaster of the earthquake, tsunami, and ongoing nuclear disaster will last generations. Like I said at the beginning of the show, it'll last for the rest of man. It's a warning to the, uh, the lesson to the rest of the world. Yes, it is, friends. Uh, look the article up. It's worth reading. FukushimaUpdate.com. Last one I'm going to get to. Friends, to donate to the show, please, every penny you give to me goes to a better show. The correct views at hotmail.com. I just bought a new computer, um, so we're gonna we're gonna do our best to keep the correct views going onward and upward. Everything, a new camera, everything's been looking great, and it's because of you. It's because of Mike McLaughlin and the Arcadia Grill. Tepco says it's running out of room to store contaminated debris at Fukushima Daiichi. Um, that's that's awful news because now not only are they going to be dealing with the water they want to send all over the place. But now we're looking at the likelihood that the, even the debris itself. It says engineers from Tokyo Electric held discussions with officials from Japanese government on Monday, where the contamin where they contaminated that where they are contaminated. It's their typo, not my reading. 
They are running out of room to store contaminated debris at the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. And you know what they're going to do. And they're going to come up with the idea to burn it. And what did we learn from Chris Busby a long time ago? We learned that if you burn it on one part of Japan, and then you burn the debris over here, and then you burn the debris over here, what you've got is nuclear poisoning going all over the country instead of simply remaining where the disaster happened. That way, when cancer, roof, cancer rates go through the roof for the entire nation, guess who's innocent? TEPCO. Yeah, they are that dirty. Let's face it, if, that, if they weren't that dirty, what would they do? They would evacuate that entire area, admit, admit that the fishing industry is done, and if, God forbid, they were going to burn it, which I'm against, they would burn it when the disaster happened. And it's just common sense, people. Let's poison the whole country. Why else would you do that other than the money? According to estimates provided by the engineers, more than 560,000 cubic meters of debris will be produced from decommissioning activities over the next 13 years. So now they don't know what to do with the parts of their nuclear power plant that they melted down so wisely by building it on an earthquake zone. Tokyo Electric believes that they can reduce some 340,000 cubic meters debris by burning wood debris and other combustible materials and crushing contaminated rubble to use to pave roads within the plant. At least they're keeping it within the plant. The only positive thing I have here, people, I work with what I've got. The utility says that they can store 60,000 cubic meters in existing storage facilities at the plant but they will need to find at least 160 cubic meters of additional storage space. Good. Here's what you do. You go ahead and you keep it all in one area. Now, you can't build the Sagafki like you did in, uh, in uh, Chernobyl because of uh, tidal waves and whatnot. But this is just another example of why nuclear anything is a terrible idea. Um... It's right there in front of you, people. Thank you for tuning in to the massive Fukushima update. I am sorry that it was a tad late. I had a computer die. I had to go get another computer. I was doing so entirely by myself. So I, I uh, got all turned around, um, and I'm back. So I look forward to seeing your comments, seeing your shares. Thank you for trusting me with the most important information of our time. I will always do my best to give you the absolute best reporting on it. Good night, friends. Please subscribe, and God bless.